Hi, welcome to this week's Something for the Weekend. I'm Tony, sales manager here at Martin Linton Sons. And it's been a long, long wait. Well, since about 2019 to be precise, but we finally got ICOM's superb ICPW2 here at the Martin Lynch headquarters. So here it is, let's get it powered up. Let's have a quick discussion as to what the wonderful features are in this linear and maybe when we can expect to actually see it in your shack. As you can see, we've got a main control unit. So those of you that had the original PW1, you probably remember that the control unit, you could tuck it into the main body. Well, exactly the same here with the PW2. However, I'm going to run it remotely just for uh, ease of use. So let's pop that back onto there. Nice solid click there as well. It's been constructed really well. As I said, this is the pre-production model, um, which Icom have very kindly lent us as Icom UK. So thank you very much, Bob and the team. And uh, I'm going to get this done now. So here we go. Let's power it up. So nice... Uh, Bit of fad noise there, as we can expect with a linear, and this is a one kilowatt linear. So perfect for the legal limit here in the UK. And hopefully this is nice and clear on the camera. You will see here on this main head unit, we've got the icon branding along the top. So HF and six meters from this linear. And it does do some special little tricks as well, which we will go into more details soon. We have the power button here which is lit as well. So if you've got a dark shack and you're maybe operating a contest during the night, that would be perfect. Got a tuner button here as well. Again, we're going to more details. We have the amp switch, which means I can either switch the amp on or off. So it's either active or non-active. And then we've got the protect button as well. So if there's any issues, we can hit protect and there's not going to be an issue. So now on this side, we have the inputs. So you can see here input one and input two. Now that's got you thinking, hasn't it? Also antenna. And we've got one down to six and one down to six on this side as well. One to six. I'm going to come to that, don't worry. And at the bottom here we have the menu button and also a quick button as well. So if you want to go to a regular use function, it can be done with the quick button there as well. Now, onto the main screen here. It's a nice clear display, full color, as you can see, and we have our power indication, ALC indication, SWR indication, and then also our temperatures here as well. And then if we go down, it's gonna show us our input. So we've got antenna one, for example, here. We've got our amp being active and the band that we're operating on and whether it's in TX or not. And if we go along here, maximum is showing one kilowatt. We've got our time as UTC, current temperature and humidity as well. So very, very clear display. You're getting near enough all of the information you're gonna need from this linear straight on that remote panel. Because what you'll find is, and, and I know this was possible with the PW1 initially, is that we normally find that this part of the unit is tucked away normally in the shack, and you're going to be operating with this on your desk. You know, whether you're just HF rag chewing or contesting. Now, this is superb for contest operation. So if you're doing SO2R operation, then this is the linear you may want to look at. And there's a reason for that. As we saw a few moments ago, We've got input one and input two. So that means that you can basically run two radios straight into this linear. So just say, for example, you're using IC 7610s, not going to be an issue. You can have one on this side, one on that side. You can do your hunting for your, you know, your extra points and your multipliers, and you can have your other CQ station on this side. And the good thing is, you've got six antenna inputs and outputs. So if you're running monoband Yagis for the contest, it's not a problem. You can just keep changing it and they will change automatically as well. So as I said, as a contest linear, this is gonna be one to look for. There will be further information. So this is a pre-production model. So I've not been able to test every function fully on this. You know, I've managed to put a little bit of power into it and, and sort of seeing what's come out. It's been absolutely fine. Kilowatt was no problem. Um, I want to use a few more of the remote features 
that is going to take a little bit of time but more information will be released as we go on and i'm sure icon will be uh forwarding this some more information regarding this so yeah as i said contesting it's going to be absolutely perfect for that we've got a, a LAN connection lead basically from the head unit which goes into the back of the radio but before i go into more detail about the back of the radio let's get this moved around and we'll do some breakdowns and a little bit more information about those special tricks it does okay so with henry's magic we can now see the rear of the linear and we're just going to go through some of the uh the options for connection to the linear so starting at this end we've got our inputs for the transceivers so as i said ideally if you're running two ic 7610s in your contest operation or your dx operation then you would input your radios into here and we go along we've got rx antenna in and outs as well and obviously these are great if you're low band dx in because i know a lot of you like to run ground loops so that's perfect you can actually you know put the input into your linear going along here we've got the access port for the controller which is the bit you saw there we've got our LAN connection so if we're going to integrate the linear into our remote station setup very very easy straight LAN connection away you go and, and obviously you've all used the rsba1 software for those that are doing it remotely at the moment uh, moving across we've got a remote aux as well so if there's any other functions you want to operate remotely that can be done there and then we've got our wonderful six antenna inputs on there as well or outputs the beauty of this is as i said you've got those two radio inputs and you've got your six antenna inputs outputs now clever thing with this it's kind of like operating as if you had two linears because you can receive obviously on both radios at the same time not an issue it's not going to cause a, a, any interference whatsoever and then just flick and switch and it would automatically pick up the antenna that you need for that band from the radio that you're using so it's very very intelligent this linear as i said i've not had a chance to run through all of the functions straight away with it but as time goes on and they upgrade this uh, pre-production model it will happen and we will get to try a few more things okay uh, going along down the bottom here we've got our band change connectors here for full integration we've then got alc i'm gonna have to bear with me while i bend down here sorry about this uh, we've also got our sends and our remotes and then we've got our accessory ports here one and two and alc and send there so again as i said it's kind of as if you've got two linears so you, you can split these separately as well so you've got obviously for radio one and radio two just here and then obviously we've got our fuses got a ground and then our ac cable coming out on the other side so very very simple to interface this linear and it's, you're going to be covered let's be honest you know if you're running a contest station this is one worth looking at for those of you that aren't contesting and you just want to do a bit of rag chewing you like to have a chat you like to discuss how your signal is you know running the linear sometimes it can't be that clean well with the 7610 there is dynamic pre-distortion as you know as standard with the radio and this is the only linear that will interface with the 7610 and allow you to use that mode so certainly worth looking at and you know as i said i keep mentioning the pw1 just because it was you know stalled for so long with the icom setups that i really do think this is going to be around for a long period as well okay so let's uh, take a look at those additional features and uh, let's have a quick flick through the menu as well but i just need to switch this around okay so we flipped it back around i've switched the linear back on and as i said we're just going to go through the menu here to see what options are in there i'm learning with you because this has literally just sort of arrived within the last hour um what i will say is we mentioned the tuner button earlier yes it does have a built-in tuner now this is going to be a big advance for you solid state linear operators that are running you know external atus all the time built-in atu as standard for a kilowatt six different antennas hopefully most of them resonant anyway but you have got that option there as standard okay so we're going to go across i'm going to hit the menu button which is going to be a bit awkward so if i do cover the uh, screen bear with me here we go so straight away you're going to see if you've got that icon radio already 7610 you're going to see here very very simple so we can go into antenna selection and look it looks exactly the same as the menus on any of the current icon models whether it's a 7610 7300 705 
So it's all going to be very simple. We're going to press this. We can go down. And we've got separate settings here for each antenna socket. So let's go into one, for example. And here we go. We can name the antenna connector. And if we click on that, we can actually list what type of antenna it is. So we can say, oh, we've got a Yagi on there, or we've got a wire, we've got our quad on there. So it's going to save you having to do all of those little additions. So just nice and quick. Oh, I don't want to go on the quad. That's on six. There it is straight away. Not a problem. And that's a lovely feature. And obviously dummy load as well. Always handy to have a dummy load in line. Okay, so let's do this. And we're going to go on to Exciter. So this is going to be for the radio. So we've got our Exciter connection. So connect two. If we want radios to inputs one and two. That's going to be easy to do, as we've seen, because we've got those two separate sockets on the back. And then we're going to go down. We've got input one and two display layout. So we can adjust that initial display, as you saw at the front, and split it basically between the two radios. So we know which one's operational, what the power is, the heat, SWR. That can be split across. And that's all I've got so far on there. As I said, this is a pre-production model. Icom did say, Tony, grab it, play with it. Not every function is going to work, however, just see how it is, you know, see if we're going to be happy with it in the future. So we're going to click on input one here, and it's now going to allow us to adjust any of the ALC alignments. And we've got our CRV addresses there. So again, integration with your radio, very, very simple, the same as if you're operating your, you know, your 7610 on the network at home, everything can be integrated. These are the options I have on here. So I've literally got those two options. There's going to be a lot more on here once it gets released. Uh, we're going to go into set just to see what's on there. So we've got time set, SD card and others. And we've got our functions, connectors, network. Again, it's going to be the same breakdown as you'd have on your current ICOM transceiver. Now I'm going to press function for you. So it's the uh, simple beep levels. We can adjust the keyboard layout as well if need be, do screen capture and also the file types and change those. And, you know, 2019, this was first mentioned, um, just got in the keyboard ears to the ground basically. And, uh, and I've got my fingers crossed that we may actually see a release of this when it comes to maybe the end of this year. Um, some of you are going to ask price wise, really don't know at the moment. Um, I'd love to say it's going to be you know, £5,000, £6,000, but I really don't know. So again, keep checking the website, make sure you like, comment and subscribe to obviously our YouTube channel, just so you get notification of when this it does become available. So let me get this switched off. There we go. Nice power down. If you've been using it excessively as I have, the fan will keep running for a little while, just get temperatures down. So there's no damage caused to the linear, which is great news. Um, so what do I think so far? Well, we've basically gone through most of the, uh, the menu functions that are active on there at the moment on this pre-production model. Um, have I used it in anger? Yes, I've used it for about 20 minutes, half an hour or so. Uh, Power-wise, very, very easy to drive. I linked it up to with the 7610 and it was around about 20 watts or so input was giving me, you know, near enough to four kilowatts. Um, Cleanness of it, as I said earlier, it does the uh, the DPD, so no issues whatsoever. You know, I'd be happy to use this all night long on, on 40 meters without getting any criticism about, oh, you've got a dirty signal, because this is a very, very clean linear when it's linked up to the 7610. Anyway, we're going to leave it there for now. Uh, once we get the actual fully working retail version of this uh, we'll do a full in-depth uh, review for you we'll probably get one of the more techie guys for you maybe we'll get mark to come pop along and uh, spend a few hours with this linear anyway thanks for watching and thank you very much to icom uk and icom japan as well for letting us uh, have a quick quick sneak peek at this uh, icpw2 it's been a long time coming but it's going to be worth the wait see you soon